Let's work through a limiting reactant problem. How many grams of carbon dioxide should be produced from the combustion of 250.0 grams of C3H8 with 320.0 grams of O2? There's a few things that tell us that this is a limiting reactant problem. First, we're looking at uh, what is being produced, but we're being given two different reactants. So we know the C3H8 and we know the O2. So which one do we use to do our calculations? The answer is we're going to need to do both. But before we can do any problem here, we're going to need the balanced equation. We've done this equation before, so just pull it from previously. So this is the 3H8 plus 5O2 going 3CO2 and 4H2O. So the way that we're going to do it for this problem, there's actually a few different ways of solving these, this type of a problem but we're looking for the grams of carbon dioxide. So we can simply determine how many grams of carbon dioxide we would make from the C3H8, and how much would we make from the O2. So we're going to find the CO2 for both. So carbon dioxide, remember, is CO2. Okay. Now, we already found the number of grams of CO2 that's produced from 250.0 grams C3H8 in a previous video. So you may want to take a look at that for the gram-gram conversion video. So go through this one pretty quick. So we'll first look at how many grams of CO2 can be produced from the combustion of 250.0 grams C3H8. So notice I've got my molar masses because when we're trying to go from grams of one compound to grams of another, we're going to convert from what we know, so we have grams of C3H8, so I'm going to go from grams of C3H8 to moles of C3H8. Once I have my moles of C3H8, I can use my balanced equation to go from moles of C3H8 to moles of CO2. And then finally, I can go from moles CO2 to grams CO2. So remember, this first step is going to be the, use the molar mass of C3H8, the middle step is going to be our balance equation, the last step we're going to use our molar mass of CO2. Okay. We already have the balance equation from the previous slide. So we have all the pieces that we need to be able to solve the, the problem. We have 250.0 grams of C3H8 that over one. I can use my molar mass of C3H8 to go from grams to moles. Once I know my moles C3H8, I can then convert to moles CO2 using the balanced equation. So I have three moles CO2 every one mole C3H8. So remember for our balanced equation, we have three moles CO2 every one mole C3H8. And then finally, I can convert from my moles of CO2 to grams of CO2 using the molar mass. So I get that I could possibly make 748.6 grams of CO2 if all of this C3H8 reacts completely. Now let's figure out whether that's going to be what we actually produced. So we want to take a look at how much we could make from the O2. So we're kind of splitting this problem into two problems. So we want to figure out how much CO2 I could make from 320.0 grams of O2. It's the same type of problem. We're going to take our grams of O2. We're going to convert that to our moles of O2. Moles of O2 to moles of CO2. Moles of CO2 to grams of CO2. If this is starting to look a little repetitive, that's good. That means you're starting to see the pattern here. If it's not, you can practice through these so you can see that pattern. So we're going to use our molar mass of O2 in this first step. The middle step, we're going to use our balanced equation. And the final step, we're going to use our molar mass of CO2. Okay. So I have 320.0 grams of O2. I use the molar mass of O2 to go from grams to moles. So I get 10 moles, 10.00 uh, moles of O2. 
do make sure that you keep your significant figures. There's four here, four here. 10.00 moles of O2. If we look on the balance equation, the coefficient for CO2 is 3, the coefficient for O2 is 5. So we get 6.000 moles of CO2. Is our, so do make sure that you are canceling out as you go along so you're very clear that you are in the right units. Our final step here, we're going to use our molar mass of CO2. It's the same type of last step as we did before, to convert from moles of CO2 to grams of CO2. So we could make 264.1 grams of CO2 from the oxygen. So now we're going to compare. We could make 264.1 grams of CO2 from the oxygen, or we could make 746.48.6 grams of CO2 from C3H8. 264.1 is less than 748.6, so the most that we could make is 264.1. We can't make more than that because we run out of O2. Since O2 is what we run out of, O2 is our limiting reactant. So the most CO2 that we can make is 264.1 grams of CO2. So for our limiting reactant, we could express it as how much CO2 we could make, what our limiting reactant is. There's a variety of ways that these can be expressed to you. So we're going to take this just a little bit further into reality, talking about uh, expected yield versus reality. So do we always get what we expect in the lab? Sadly, no. This is not, you know, the, in the real world, we're limited by uh, errors. There's all sorts of things. You lose things. You spill things. Uh, experimental error happens. Also, you know, there, it's hard to get a reaction to be completely perfect. So we have to calculate one additional thing when we're talking about limiting reactant, which is we, when we're in a real lab, we often have to look at percent yield. So the percent yield is just up, gives us a percent of the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. So percent yield, um, if you have a percent yield in the, the 90s, that's typically pretty good, you know, 80s, less so. Kind of depends on the type of reaction, what a good percent yield is. Ideally, you want a percent yield as close to 100% as possible without being over 100%. If you have over 100% for a yield, probably something has gone wrong. You've spilled something into your reaction. You haven't dried things enough. Something has gone wrong. So if we get 200.12 grams of CO2 from the previous reaction, we want to know what is our percent yield. So we can use this equation to determine our percent yield. So our actual yield, we had the uh, 200.12 grams CO2. The theoretical yield we calculated before of 264.1. So 264.1 is our theoretical, 200.2 is our, our, uh, our actual. We can plug it into our equation and we can find 75.77% yield. So there's you know, essentially a third way that you sometimes see limiting reactant or limiting reagent problems. You could be calculating out your theoretical yield. You could be calculating your percent yield. You could be calculating out uh, and just determining what is your limiting reactant. So just identifying the compound that's your limiting reactant. Make sure to pay very careful attention to what is being asked for in limiting reactant problems because of that variation and what could be asked for.